Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be talking about submarines because Wargaming just confirmed they are in active development. Now, what does active development mean? Well, they didn't specify, but I would say active development is incorporating it into every aspect of the game. And there's a couple clues into what Wargaming wants to do. I'm going to share the article that they wrote, and I'll give my thoughts on it. The game in the background is actually from the very operation which they reference. So for many of you, you've probably seen this, but for some of you, you have no idea what they're talking about and what it might look like from a submarine standpoint. So I'm just sharing this. You've probably seen it, you know, over a year ago, if you were watching my content. So yeah, there's nothing new on the screen other than a refresher in the exact mechanics that the subs do. So let's, let's read through this article and then leave our thoughts. I'm not going to make any comments until I read through the full. So, Wargaming. Back in 2018, many of you have participated in operations called Terror of the Deep. This event allowed everyone to try a new class in our game, Submarines. By the end of the event, it became clear that our players are highly interested in submarines and we should be engaged in full development. And now, we are happy to announce that the first stages of closed testing will begin shortly, where the new gameplay of submarines will be tested. The American and German submarines will be the pioneers of this new class. After the super test, submarines will be available for players to try on a special server before being added to the main game client. So, if I'm interpreting this, the super test closed beta version of the submarines, super testers, internal testing. I don't think that CCs will be able to participate, but you know, guy can dream. Uh, and then they will be transitioned over to a special server where everyone gets a chance to try them for, you know, a couple weeks probably. And then they are incorporated into whatever client patch we happen to be up at the time. And at that stage, a lot of you are going, Oh, no! You're doing the CV rework all over again. Well, once introduced, the new class will initially be available in a special separate battle type only. And this final configuration stage will last for several months on the live client. This will allow us to make additional changes to the new class under the conditions of the live server. We will be sharing more details with you shortly. Follow our official game channels for more news. So, shortly is next week because Gamescom. It's a really big show for video games. You know Wargaming is going to be there. It's, it's what, the EU's biggest video game event. And all the EU titles are going to be there. And they're already going to show off another game that they're making. It's a sort of a four versus four third person uh, military sim. And uh, interesting. Of course, Germans love video games. Germans also love Germans. So I think we're going to see some German submarines with some models and maybe a hint of gameplay at Gamescom. And that's next week, guys. That's on the 20th. So look forward to that. I guarantee you, I haven't had anyone talk to me, but I think that's obviously the end game here. They want to try and get all of the information to hype it up, to get people excited to go see their booth and to eventually see gameplay and be rewarded for it. Now, for me personally, I am excited at the prospects, especially the way they plan to incorporate them into the game because that should protect random rank and clan from all the bull crap that we went through with the CV rework, hopefully. Now, let's just assume all that stuff, they do exactly what they said, but then we're back to the balance. Uh, for Halloween, it was clearly a Halloween event. You had frozen torpedoes that quite literally froze the ship in place and removed its ability to fire. That's what the half moon is. Obviously, that's not going to be in the real game. <laughs> but we're going to have single launch torpedoes at a target. Because of the way Flood works now, it actually puts a slow on the target. So you could follow up after applying a slow from your torpedoes and the flood itself to then have an easier time hitting the target. And that works out very nicely. Maybe submarines have increased flood chance 
when attacking the target. And depending on the reload cycle, they might be able to do a lot of damage or a little bit of damage. Now, I don't think submarines should be anywhere close to damage farmers. I think and I hope that they are more like rogues and assassins and they really have to manage when they attack because they can't keep a sustained attack going. You know, you pick on targets that are low health, isolated, or with a group, just like a wolf pack, obviously, and you better, better absolutely believe that Wargaming wants to try and keep some of those established archetypes that we all come to know and love the submarine for as their base game. So they will absolutely be encouraged to work together, hopefully, to deal with a problem. And hopefully by working with their teammates and other subs, they will be able to do that. But I don't want them to be able to deal with a battleship and make them look like, uh, you know, a kid. I think that that would be unwise for Wargaming to turn them into such a damage dealer that they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe against something as big as a battleship. I'm just very concerned that Wargaming... Their track record suggests that they are more inclined to encourage more damage rather than less, where I would push the submarine as intel gathering, as a finisher, as sort of a, a obviously an assassin towards a target that's close, but any established duration of engagement, they're completely, you know, weak. I would love for them to be able to sort of retreat Move forward, do your attack, retreat, go back. There's no guns to fire. There's nothing that you need to keep in establishment. I don't expect that the secondary guns on the deck will be as useful as they were in Halloween. They were just kind of ridiculous on some of the builds. But it could be used to, I don't know, anti-submarine warfare. I don't know exactly how prevalent homing or wire guided or if wargaming would ever do that i kind of feel like wargaming is going to lean towards no wire or homing guided torpedoes because it kind of takes away some of the skill of the gameplay itself even if it was available you know even if even if you could easily use submarine torpedoes and be completely devastating i don't know that for gameplay that's the best obviously i could be completely wrong they could have changed this to something completely different, but the gameplay was so well established and so enjoyable for a lot of people, I don't know why you would change it so drastically. I fully expect there to be a surface, a periscope depth, and then when you are below that, you can't attack, and you're basically just moving freely to avoid obstacles that may or may not get in the way, you know, torpedoes or sinking uh, ships, something like that. So, very, very interesting to, from my standpoint, what this means. Obviously, there's people who are just, you know, doom and gloom, the end of the game. Uh, I look at it as an opportunity to make it better. And there are definitely ways to make the game better. Let's be real. And one of the most glaring ways is just more team-oriented tactics and skill sets and usefulness and tools for giving information for the team, but also, you know, like sort of layering your damage and layering your effort towards a target together. So as a submarine, what are some iconic tools? Remember, these subs did not have any consumables. I think obviously we're going to have to have some sort of sonar. There's going to be some sort of animation tied to the audio to give you the quintessential submarine tactics. Obviously, through periscope depth, highly recommend that that must be a, a clear defining trait of a lot of submarines. I'm hoping that certain factions will be better or worse at some of these aspects and maybe have more useful tools. I love the whole interaction. We know that depth charges were sort of automatically assigned to DDs and cruisers in this game mode. I'm going to assume that they're going to also be automatically assigned, similar to secondary guns or AA guns. It's just an a equipment that will work as long as it's still intact. And if you want to increase your accuracy, maybe it will be assigned to some commander skill that they'll have to create. I'm also, you know, curious if like something like radio location 
would be a useful tool for for hunting down submarines. You know, for example, radio location could work on submarines only when they're at the surface. So they could introduce some sort of confusion to the enemy team if, for instance, their radio location points towards a, a different direction and then instantly switches for, you know, whatever time frame the submarine is on the surface, but then when they go under the water, radio location switches back to something else. Aircraft carriers are an obvious counter. They can drop sonar buoys in the water. They can fly their aircraft over, uh, detect a target, and sort of layer on top of that. I expect the sonar buoy attack rocket combo to be very prevalent. If they can catch them on the surface and go at them, they're gonna do that. And that might be a cool little layering. If you layer with a sonar, and a teammate is able to fire on this surface vessel and maybe he's just barely too slow to get underwater. He'll take damage, you know, he'll be set on flood or fire and be burning. It would be kind of cool if, you know, a submarine, if the burn would take away oxygen at a faster rate than if he was, you know, obviously not underwater with a fire. So there's a lot of cool little things that they could introduce to this class that other players could work around and incorporate in their play. You know, if you're someone who's like, oh, he's gonna be on the surface for half a second, if you cause him to have a fire, maybe he can only put the fire out quickly on the surface or slow underwater. You know, there's a lot of things that you could maybe encourage depth charges causing a fire. The only way to put the fire out is to come to surface. It might be cool for Wargaming to incorporate a lot of these different aspects into the counter submarine play so that when you're playing against submarines, there's a lot of different options on how you could, you know, get them on the surface so you can actually hurt them. Now, obviously, oxygen is going to be the biggest limiting factor for them. They've already very well developed. In the game mode, there were different, I guess, styles of submarines, some with a larger oxygen tank it took forever to recharge and then some with a very small oxygen tank but it was a very fast recharging oxygen tank i don't know if that will be some line defining trait or it will be individual submarines with their own individual oxygen levels i it's obviously there's not any information to say but i hope in a week's time we will get a better understanding of exactly what a german or an american submarine might look like in a random battle and that right there is probably the most disappointing thing for a lot of players is that they will be incorporated in the full development of the full game we're getting the real thing guys we're not getting some operation so cv rework has left a very bad taste in my mouth i'm hoping that by the time the subs rear their head that mouth will be washed out with listerine or something because it's bad and we need to see a better development in general Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You can also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos, first impression, how-to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.